In today's video, I'm going to show you how to tween the time scale and progress methods of an animation. First, I'm going to show you why it's cool to tween these methods, and then I'll step back and explain how GSAP handles tweening properties that are actually functions. In this first demo here, I have a timeline that's animating all these little green circle particles, if you will. You'll notice that they're animating at a decent speed right now, but if I tween the time scale to 4, notice that they progressively get faster, alright? It's not abrupt. It smoothly accelerates. If I go back to 1, it's going to smoothly decelerate back to the normal time scale, and I can go even slower to a time scale of 0 0.1. So instead of having very abrupt changes in speeds, I can make them very smooth by tweening the time scale. In this demo here, I have a single tween animating this little red ghost along a Bezier path. These progress buttons allow me to tween to different progress values. So if I tween to a progress of 0, notice I can make him bounce off the start position. If I go to progress 0.5, he can do sort of a back ease out to the middle of the animation, and I can also have him bounce off the end. And even though the original tween plays back at a linear constant rate, I can tween the progress of that tween using any ease I want. Let me show you how this looks in code. So up top here, we're creating this Bezier tween, which is just a tween max tween using the Bezier plugin. And we're passing in some XY values, some of them are random. But the real magic happens when we press the buttons, okay? Inside this onClick function, the first thing we do is take that Bezier tween and pause it, alright? We don't want it to continue playing after we've tweened the progress, so that's just one minor detail. But what I want to focus on is this tween light to tween, okay? What's happening here is we are specifying that the Bezier tween is going to be the target of this tween and the value we're going to be tweening or the property is the progress, all right? So when we tween the progress of a tween to zero, it essentially rewinds it and we're also applying an ease of bounce dot ease out. So essentially what we're doing is creating a tween that tweens the progress of another tween. Now you may be wondering, you know, progress and time scale, those are methods, all right? How do you tween something that's a method or a function? You're probably used to just tweening properties. Well, let me explain. So most of the time, people use GSAP to animate the CSS properties of DOM elements. However, in its most simple form, GSAP can tween any numeric property of any JavaScript object, all right? So here I have a very simple demo that shows you that a game object is being created that has a score property of zero. Then here I have a tween max tween that takes that game object as a property and animates the score to a value of 10. Now there's really nothing to see, so I'm using an on update to log out the game.score variable. So if I run this, you're going to see that we have numbers 0 through 10 being logged out as that animation runs. So there we've animated a numeric property of a JavaScript object. Give me one second to change some things around. Now what I want to show you is that GSAP can also animate the values of functions that set or get values. What does that mean? Let's take a look. Here I have a game object set up. It has a private score property of zero, so we're calling that underscore score. And then there's a score function that takes a value as a parameter. And there's a little condition here that says, if there are no arguments provided or no values, then we're just going to return the score value. So here we're using this function as a getter. It gets a value for us if none is passed in. But then down here we have code that sets underscore score to whatever the value is that was passed in, and then it logs it out. So essentially, this is what we call a setter getter function, okay? It can set a value or return one. So the way you would use a function like this is if we log out game.score, we're not passing any arguments in, so we should then be returned whatever the score is. So let me run, and you're going to see in the console that we get the value of zero. So that's using that function as a getter. I'm going to comment that out, and let's go down to this next line, and I'm going to use it as a setter, okay? So here we have game.score, and I'm going to pass in the value of 5,000. Since there is an argument passed in, the score is going to be updated, and we're also going to log it out. So let's run, and then now you're going to see the console says score set 
to 5,000. So the same function basically does two different things. It gets or sets a value. And GSAP is smart enough to recognize when objects have these getter setter functions as properties. So here I can tween the value of score, all right? Score, when it's a property of game, is a function that can either set or get a value. So let me put my nice semicolon on there and hit run and check it out. Now when I tween the value of score in the console, we get all these little uh, console logs because we're continually setting that value to something else. And in this function, when you pass in an argument, it logs out that value. So all this to show you that if you create an object that has a function that can set or get or return a value, then you can actually tween that function, if you will, with a tween. Every animation object in GSAP has its own setter getter methods that can be tweened. I already showed you how to tween the progress. Let me just jump over to this demo here where we tweened the time scale. And if I scroll down, you'll see that we're creating the particles timeline max. So we're gonna scroll down a bit and I'm going to show you that after that animation is created, we have these buttons that create tweens that tween the particles timelines time scale to different values. And what's cool about this is that while you're doing these little tweens, you can set your own durations and you can also set your own eases so you can get a variety of effects. So I wanna encourage you to check out the demos below and see how you can use this in your own projects. Happy tweening.